Hello everybody and uh, thanks for connecting uh, to this event from Academia to Industry, a lunchtime conversation. Uh, I hope you will find it useful and uh, we have here two uh, representatives from industry, uh, uh, Carol and uh, Helen, who have kindly agreed to give their perspectives on their expertise and uh, on their experience in uh, how it is to transition from academia into industry and uh, what type of, uh, you know, what their what's their job like and, uh, you know, their opinion and that can give you hopefully some tips as well if you're thinking about uh, moving into industry career. So I'm Giovanna Lali, I'm the Director of Scientific Affairs of the UK DRI and I will be, you know, asking questions to Helen and, and Carol and also I'm very happy to uh, ask them questions on your behalf. So besides the audience that is present uh, here at UCL, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, send me your questions at the email that you can see on the slide, g.lally at ucl.ac.uk, and I will be very happy to ask these questions to Ellen and Carol on your behalf. I have to say, this is a, a, you know, an informal conversation, so many times we have heard also in the UK DRI network about, uh, you know, from early career researchers, PhD students, uh, postdocs, uh, who are thinking about probably you know, using their expertise to try to make a move into, into industry, what it is like. Uh, many of these people don't have direct contacts into the industry, and so this is just an opportunity for you to ask questions in an informal manner to, to researchers like you, who have, made, you know, have done their PhD, they also uh, had postdoc experiences, and then they decided to uh, transition into an industry career. Um, this is also thanks to So Yong Hong, I have to say, a, a fellow in the UK DRI at UCL who you know, uh, kindly had this idea and invited Helen and Carol to, to speak. Uh, and also it's also a response of some feedback that we got from our early career workshop, a cross thematic workshop on urine inflammation that we held last month. And so this was something that really came up in the discussion with early career researchers, uh, how to get more information about the industry and what it is like to work in an industry environment. Um, just one last thing before we start, uh, I also wanted to remind you that we're going to hel hel hold sorry, a, another career event on the 9th of July that is also going to be broadcasted across the UK DRI network. Uh, it's going to be a career networking day with uh, I think at least 9 or 10 different speakers in different uh, uh, scientific uh, contexts working in different fields. So uh, we will circulate info in due course and uh, this is going to be broadcasted again. So if you cannot attend in person, you can still watch the recordings or uh, look in, watching uh, uh, online, streamed online. Okay, so then... Uh, we can start. I think, you know, I'm not going to introduce uh, and make a formal introduction for Helen and Carol uh, because they're going to introduce uh, themselves and have slides to introduce their career pathway. But uh, I have to just to say thank you very much for doing this and uh, welcome to uh, UKDRI at UCL and uh, we look forward to, to hearing from you. And uh, Carol, if you would like to start. Uh, sorry, Helen, Helen sorry. <laughs> um, hi, uh, thank you to Sion and Giovanna and the UK DRI for inviting us here to speak with the uh, trainees. But um, yeah, so my name is Helen Crehan. I am Irish, if you can <laughs> tell. Um, so I did my undergraduate, it was a BSc in pharmacology at University College Dublin in Ireland. Um, I then came to the UK to do my master's in um, the Institute of Neurology, so I did the Clinical Neuroscience um, MSc program, um, for, after which I continued to, um, continued to do my studies here at UCL and um, did my PhD with John Hardy and Jennifer Pocock at the Institute of Neurology um, at UCL, and um, this was investigating the role of complement receptor 1 in Alzheimer's disease. Um, I guess, which I haven't added here, but something I did during my PhD was I um, applied for the Bogue Fellowship, which is offered here at UCL and perhaps through um, other institutes, I'm not certain about that. But um, during this, I was able to do a three-month internship over at Brigham Women's Hospital in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I completed this um, internship and I returned back um, to London to finish my PhD. Um, and after which I started my postdoctoral research at um, Harvard Medical School and Brigham Women's Hospital with uh, Dr. Cynthia Lemire. Um, here I did um, a number of things from preclinical pre in vivo and ex vivo um, work looking at an anti-pyroglutamate um, 3 A-beta monoclonal antibody and also looking at um, complement receptor 1 in human AD. 
I then transitioned from this postdoc into a scientist position in early discovery, uh, or sorry, in translational biomedicine um, yeah, at ASI in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I first entered this group, and after about a year, I was um, moved into a different group, so into the um, immunodementia discovery um, biology group at ASI, and I have been in this group for the last two years. So I've been in ASI for three years in total. Thank you, Helen. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Um, thank you again for the, for the invitation. Um, so my name is Karel Lotero Gutierrez. I am originally from Cuba. I went to university um, in Cuba. I studied biochemistry and molecular biology. Um, and then after I graduated, I worked a little bit in, um, in Cuba in a, in a research institute until I, I went to Italy for an ex in an exchange program. And that turned out to be um, that's like seven years um, working there. I did, I did my PhD there, and I trained in immunology in the Mario Negri Institute in, the, in Milan. Um, after that, um, I guess like many other of my colleagues, we I went to the to the U.S. for a postdoc, um, always in immunology, and, um, and I did my postdoc in, um, in San Luis, Washington University. Studying um, macrophage biology, um, microglia, and uh, different uh, myeloid cells. Um, that um, I did that for about five years. And at that time, I moved to industry after a number of um, interviews and you know testing different um, uh, possible career paths. I, I decided to join Biogen. So I was in a, in a company named Biogen for, uh, and I was there for about six years. I started in the department of immunology, then uh, the department of immunology was terminated and I joined the department of neuroimmunology and then at a certain point the department of immunology was terminated again and I joined the, um, another uh, group that was uh, focused on Alzheimer's disease. And this was in, uh, all in research, um, doing exploratory work, trying to um, um, to do you know, validation work and, um, and investigating the biology of possible targets for uh, lately Alzheimer's disease. Uh, at the beginning, more uh, targets that could be um, used for uh, the treatment of autoimmune diseases. That's, that's how I started. And uh, just three months ago, I, I moved to ASI. Um, I'm the, in the same department as Ellen in, monolo in monodementia discovery, uh, where we are uh, studying um, basically targets that, uh, for Alzheimer's disease that are expressing microglia, the macrophages of the brain. And uh, yeah, we we'll would be obviously very happy to answer any of your questions. Okay. Or, uh, share our experiences. Thank you very much both. Um, can I just kick off with the first, uh, a first question and then we start and open to the audience. So why did you decide to move into industry, you know, given your experience, you know, had very successful PhD and uh, postdoctoral periods, what made you decide, okay, I should, I should now move to an industry career? Um, well, for me, um, my postdoc was um, part of the work was actually working with a German pharmaceutical company, so I kind of had a bit of exposure to what the preclinical side of um, the research was, and um, I always was kind of interested in drug development, how you know how you can go from you know discovery to developing the drug, and I just wanted to learn more about it. Um, I talked a lot with a lot of people at different conferences to kind of get a better understanding of this, but um, I think I always had that interest in seeing a drug go, if, go from the early stages, mm -hmm. as far as I can see it, obviously I'm not a clinician. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so in my case was uh, honestly a little bit by chance. Um, you know, the time that I was working in academia, I, I didn't really know much about industry and um, why they do that. Um, uh, there, but um, um, 
So at a certain point of my postdoc, I realized that I had to move on and do something, uh, some, you know, move with my career. And um, I mean, at that time, it seems that um, academia was like kind of like the only path or the mm -hmm. only path I, I knew. Did you ever think about mm -hmm. a PI position, apply for an independent yeah. fellowship? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Um, it's just that uh, the way um, the way I worked in the in the lab where I did my postdoc didn't really um, give me much chance to you know get exposed to writing grants and stuff. I, I was basically you know being scientist all the time, just like you know working every day a lot, trying to publish papers that kind of thing. And then uh, I guess you're not the only one. Yeah. yeah. And then with the, with the you know with the idea that um, somehow there was this idea that you know you just like do that 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 and then kind of like a job with will come up somehow. Um, so when I actually realized that I, that I actually had to you know, find the way, the next level, um, so it happened um, very random that some company contacted uh, my lab for a, for a position. Um, so I talked with, a, it was a recruiter, I talked with him. Um, it turned out not to be uh, the right fit. It was a senior scientist position, and um, and I learned that uh, basically uh, from a postdoc position to go to industry, you, you don't go directly to a senior scientist position because there is so much that you have to learn in industry. Uh, in particular, drug discovery is a very complex thing. Uh, is it involves really a lot of disciplines mm. and a lot of um, you know, new things that, that, uh, that I didn't know. But I learned <laughs> that in industry, uh, the people in industry actually do a great job. There are like many, the many companies that, that do a great job, including uh, jobs, uh, you know, work aimed to explore or uh, basically ba basic work that you have to do mm -hmm. in order to, you know, to know if a protein or, or a molecule can be a target, and uh, and then like how do you want to target it? Do you want to inhibit it? Do you want to block it? Kind of thing. Um, and that um, and I learned also that um, that in industry was where uh, basically you could be closer to make a drug, and uh, uh, because basically you know industry is uh, is settled to, to to do that. So I. I just got more interested and I started to network and ask people around and, um, and talk with people in different industries. And, um, and I really like Biogen because um, Biogen um, was very committed to do um, really good work from the biology point of view. Mm -hmm. From the basic biology from point, the basic point, point, point of view. From the basic biology point of view, yeah. Um, so yeah, I joined them and, and um, I was not disappointed. So it was almost like a random event that made you then decide, but, okay, yeah. I should explore this type of uh, new Yeah, I have to say I didn't know anything about the uh, industry and how people work there. I learned it on the way. Well, sometimes it's also in random events that can uh, influence uh, your decisions no, in your career. Any questions from the audience? Yes. Can you please use the microphone? Yes. I'm just curious to know that uh, how does your uh, research look like? Like when you say you work in microglia and Alzheimer's disease, what is the exact nature of work so that I can understand like how, how is a typical day in academia different from a typical day in say the industry? Like what is the research? What exactly do you do and how is it different from say uh, academy research in microglia and Alzheimer's disease? Got it. Do you want to start again? Um, <laughs> So it depends on uh, the stage of the project uh, that you're working on. Um, so I had different experiences. I had the experience of just um, proposing a project uh, about a new uh, molecule that, that, that was involved in a particular disease. Um, so um, so it, uh, I guess needless to say, in the, in the industry, we are interested in studying molecules that could be uh, important for uh, you know, basically to, to generate the drug to cure a particular disease. And that, uh, and that I guess that the main difference with, uh, 
with academia in which you can, you know, study the, the biology of something that you are interested regardless of if that uh, research will, you know, will necessarily, you know, go to solve any problem in a particular disease or something. So, uh, in a project like that, that is at the very beginning, is really very similar to what you would do in academia. You do, you know, you want to validate maybe things that are in the literature and you want to reproduce it and, and, and know if they are true. So you can maybe move uh, from that. You, you basically want to make sure doing in vitro, in vivo work, if, uh, if that molecule can be a target, mm. one, and then uh, how would you modulate it? You want to activate it, you want to inhibit, you want to do something else. Um, and kind of like also get into like how would you do that with a large molecule like an antibody or an antibody derived in or with a small molecule or with a low oligonucleotide. So there are like all these different things. Um, but for example, now the, the project that I work on in ASI is um, beyond that stage. We know that this can be a, you know, this molecule can be a, a target. We believe that it can be a target. Um, for uh, for the disease, um, we know that we what we want to how we want to modulate it. We think that um, we show we chose um, a modality to do this. So basically, at this point of the of this project, um, what we are doing is uh, just developing essays that will allow us to you know screen different drug candidates and get to the best one. Um, and that is a still, so the drug discovery, that is, that is a still what is known as preclinical. Mm -hmm. um, so out of this work, we will get to a drug candidate that we will move to basically you know, a, a clinical trial. Um, so what I do, what we do is, uh, is preclinical. It's like, you know, try to get from you know, drug candidates on the way to just introduction in the clinic. So I guess it's much more focused, let's say, you know, you have to have in, a, in mind just to try to identify a target molecule that's going to be then triggering a whole range of different uh, techniques and approaches to try to look at the right modulator, the drug modulator, validate the target, and, and then also involving, I guess, medicinal chemists, you know, drug mm -hmm. design, you know, different type of uh, Many different experts disciplines. Yes. come then and try to really identify the best molecule that then you can be taken in, uh, in in animal models, I guess, yeah. in vivo systems. It's a, it's, a, it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. There are really um, so many competences that ca have to come together to, to create a drug. Mm -hmm. And um, you are uh, kind of the expert in some part of that. Um, but, you, but you have to maybe not become an after on all these, these other uh, 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 disciplines, but definitely, like you know, you have to understand them, so you so you know uh, that you how your work will help, and how the work of others will help in the whole in the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Any other um, Hi, I'm Jer. I'm a PhD student in the Science Lab at the moment. Um, what part of the transition from academia to industry did you guys find the most difficult? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think trying to structure your day to allow for time. So you you might be working on multiple projects that are spread at different stages mm -hmm. through the line. But So you have to try and structure your time to fit in to do your lab work and go to meetings and you know have one-to-ones with particular project leads. But I think it keeps it quite exciting because you're learning new things as you go along. Um, kind of like Carol mentioned about when you're working on a project, you could be you know, around a table with a data scientist, a medicinal chemist, you know, a statistician, you know, someone from each different, or geneticist, like someone from each um, area. So, but at each project you're working on, it could be at a different level. There might be more or less of people there. So getting prepared for each of these meetings can be challenging at the start, just to get used to, but I think in the long run, it's exciting. Yeah, so, what's the most difficult? Um, so I would say from the, 
So in the practical point of view, I found uh, learning uh, drug discovery and how drug discovery works was challenging for me. I honestly didn't know much about that. I was very academic when I was in academia, just like, you know, knowledge and stuff. But I, I honestly never saw exactly how would you, you know, make a drug out of or how a molecule could, could be considered a target for a... So there was a, you know, challenging and definitely a lot of, uh, of learning. Um, very nice things in, in, a, in industry is that, um, that there is uh, a lot of mentorship. So in, uh, in industry, you, you will have always mentors at, at every level. Uh, your boss, colleagues, stuff. And, uh, and the system is uh, in, in companies like Biogen and SI, where I have been. Um, is very well uh, structured and uh, there is a lot of interest in, in people to kind of like, you know, mm. basically you don't have, to, you, you can learn all those things. Um, I guess men mentally, I, it was a challenge for me to go to industry and kind of like, um, uh, basically the need to focus mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of just like, you know, having all these ideas and, you know, um, you know, go on and do experiments that can that, that to explore all these different things. Uh, you have to be really focused mm -hmm. and uh, and really separate what is what is needed from what is like nice or interesting uh, mm -hmm. in order for the drug discovery to push the drug discovery forward. Uh, said that I really like Biogen and now SI that you are uh, able to do uh, maybe additional things. It depends on you know. It depends on everyone. If you if you if you want, if you are interested, uh, you can still do, you know, have your uh, pet project or your interesting things uh, on the side. Obviously related to the, to the, you know, to the target and the biology that you are uh, that you are studying. I think that that's really important. And I guess also you need to know how to cope with change because, as you mentioned, you know, throughout the industry career, you can have departments that are being closed or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, some directions that are just yeah, so right. research are shut down. So, yeah, how do you cope? That I mean, you, how did you find that aspect? Because that you, that's also that you, quite different. From, yeah. you, you learn the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, say. Yeah, uh, I was actually, when I first started, I think that was something that was in the back of my mind a lot. And I would, like, ask my, you know, office mate. I'm like, oh, does this happen often? But after a while, you just have to let that go and just go with the flow, I guess. But... Um, I guess during um, my background, you can see that I, I, the groups didn't disappear, but I was moved from one group to another. So I guess, you know, you might interview in a different group and for a particular manager, and then you get moved into another group, and that I'm sure can be quite challenging. It worked out well for me. I was, um, I was okay with my move, and it worked out in the long run. But I think maybe that can be a worry for some people: the unexpected movement mm -hmm. within. A company, or even a company, shut down. But yeah, uh, like this. There are, uh, um, yeah, there are uh, decisions uh, taken by the company to maybe terminate or uh, change groups that are purely based on business. There's a business reasons. Uh, I mean, the company uh, knowledge that. Uh, it's not that that area is not important or those issues are, are not important. It's, it's totally the opposite. Yeah. And uh, but um, um, but you know, like there is, uh, depending on the company, there is not uh, that much more than the company. Like the company also sometimes because it's all about, you know it, it all costs money. Have to you know focus on maybe like one thing because there are like some assets that are like advanced and. The more advanced are the asset, the more uh, money you have to spend in clinical trials and stuff. So sometimes companies have to kind of like redirect uh, or, uh, or uh, kind of change a little bit of the focus on uh, of the company. And at the moment, uh, yeah, like it just happened, and you have to kind of add that. That can mean that you might uh, move to a different group and maybe work on a different thing, mm -hmm. or uh, or even leave the company. Um, and that, uh, I mean, that's, uh, you, you also had that power, basically, maybe like leave this company and join another one that is uh, working on things that you are mm -hmm. more interested of, your, that you feel that you are uh, better trained. Right. 
and you bring a different perspective into that new group as well. So I've noticed that recently with a particular project, the training that I got for one particular type of experiment, one group, which, which was more large scale in translational biomedicine, I could bring that to scale up yeah. something that oh. needed to be done in oh. early discovery. So you use your skills that you had developed into a different context. Exactly, yeah. I had an online uh, question from Chloe, um, who's a PhD student. Is it better to move to industry directly after a PhD or better to gain more experience in postdoc and then move to industry? So is it more or less beneficial to make the move at one of these stages particularly? What do you think? I think it can vary. So both of us did a postdoc and then moved into industry. I am um, glad I did that. I gained a lot more experience that was different from the experience I had in my PhD, which stands to me now because I use both trainings. Mm -hmm my day today but um, I have friends who went straight from PhD to an industry position mm -hmm. it was actually here in the UK and she um, had the exact skills that were needed for that particular project so it was beneficial for obviously the company and for her as well and mm -hmm. um, well she was very interested in this position there are companies that offer postdoc programs which are um, quite useful as well, so you can kind of have the hybrid of still being able to mm -hmm. do your academia style research and you know have publications and um, but still learn how industry and drug development works. Um, so I think you know that's a good hybrid as well. Yeah, I, I, I honestly I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that question. It depends, I, I, guess. I had a I had a postdoc and, and I'm also very thankful that I that I did by postdoc, I think that, uh, that it helped me a lot to, to learn more about uh, biology research. Um, I also changed a little bit my uh, field and that, was, uh, and that was actually great, I think. Yeah, just related to that, yeah. maybe uh, just another point. Uh, what about the type of positions that you can actually access in industry, depending whether you're coming from a PhD or from a postdoc, I guess there is some sort of ladder that you have to go through in, in terms of positions. Maybe you can have a little bit of overview on that. Uh, yeah, um, I, I, you can definitely, um, with a PhD, you can uh, join a company with a scientist position. Um, maybe after postdoc you get like a slightly higher uh, um, scientist, um, scientist, whatever, like position, it depends on the the company how they call these these positions um, what I have what I have seen in uh, in the US is that uh, with you know more and more um, um, candidates um, kind of like shifting towards like having a postdoc usually uh, rather than just a PhD um, but then you can also have the opportunity then with years to become a group leader inside a, a department in the um, industry. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And, and that's not to say, uh, I mean, you, you join a company and you, can, you, know, you will learn a lot of things. Not only throughout the recovery, you will learn about the you know, biology in the fields and stuff. It's not that, uh, it's not that you stop learning in, in that point of view. Um, I just found the you know, university environment like really, you know, um, really useful to you know just open your mind to so many things. In the in industry, you you can focus. Um, so yeah, but you know, maybe I, I, I mean I still uh, yeah I, I, I still like uh, a lot the uh, you know academia and, and, what, and what you do in academia. So. But I guess also there are opportunities for industry. I mean, biogenetics and other industries are also very keen to develop links with academia in terms of totally. the clinical projects. So yep. this is something that you know researchers can explore, whether there can be ways to collaborate with industry on joint projects, on collaborative efforts. Any other question from the audience? OK, yeah, sure. So how easy or difficult was uh, transitioning into the industry? Like, uh, how, was you, how did you land your first job in the <laughs> industry? So, um, Mine, my, I guess, uh, I would say network as much as you can. Um, I was, uh, somebody reached out to me that I had worked in a department that I was in before about a position that 
he had heard about in another company. He was hiring for a position in his company, contacted another a group lead in a different company, and then they were like, well, we both have positions, do you know anyone? And he happened to know that my skill set would fit for this position, so I met the hiring manager for a coffee, and then, then he brought me in for a formal interview with the other candidates, but um, word of mouth. I had started to, I was starting to think about it, um, but I hadn't officially done any <laughs> applications, so I guess I was quite lucky in that respect. But um, yeah. How, how was that interview? Can you just a moment oh. because the microphone, otherwise people cannot hear. How was the interview? Um, yeah. So it's. Like, it, 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 <laughs> um, query like why you were moving away from academia. Um, yeah, there was those questions, but I don't think. I think a lot of people do transition in, so it wasn't like a, a shock that I was, you know, applying to industry. But um, you know, you come in, you do your talk for an hour, you have questions, and then you just meet with various department heads and group um, members for the rest of the day. But um, yeah, they were obviously interested to know why you want to move. They want to make sure you have the right reasons that you, you know, you're still interested in the science and. Um, but yeah, I think. Probably what what type of, uh, you know, <laughs> what do you think, you know, now you're working in industries, so you know, when you, if you want to hire people in your departments, what type of skill set, what type of expertise would you look for, you know, of course, besides specific techniques or approaches that may be useful for specific experiments in your lab, but what are you looking for in a successful candidate, uh, you know, to offer the job in an yeah. industry context? What do you think are the key skills that you are looking for? Yeah. Um, we were discussing this before, so um, yeah, problem solving as well as good technical ability is obviously very important. Um, to be able to communicate well, because you are interacting with a lot of different science background um, professionals in the, in the company and also um, non-scientists. So I, I will sometimes work with IP and I have to you know, discuss how the project, you know, what it is in particular that I want covered in this license agreement. So you have to be able to communicate um, various, with various um, backgrounds. Um, would you add anything? Yeah, no, that, um, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, not ju it's not just the, your particular skills, but uh, just your, um, how, you know, just to be a good scientist. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, t uh, teamwork is essential yeah. in, a, in, a, in, in industry. That's how it, it works. That how you can make a drug. So definitely, people that are that can you know that can work with people and communicate with people and collaborate. Uh, yeah, obviously that's a that's the, it's difficult in an interview to, to really know how you are. Um, but uh, but those are like you know questions that are like very clearly um, asked. And, uh, Did they ask you specific they, tasks to carry out specific tasks? I don't know in your interview or no? It was just no, no, really. <laughs> yeah. I did. Ha I never had a, that uh, that, uh, yeah. that experience. Uh, really. But I think that's why, as well, it, you know, you interact with a lot of people throughout your career. So sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you're not a team player, by word of mouth, it might get yeah. it right. You know, so it's, we call your references, references and, yeah. and know about you know how you how you interact. With you know, in your lab and, uh, and stuff. But, um, you know, we all came from, from academia. Um, we know how it is. Uh, they know how it is when, I, when, I, when, I, when you know, when we, when we interview. So um, you have to worry, like, it's not, you know, when, when, you know, we all know how, how things are. And, and uh, yeah, just, just try to get the, the, you know, the best match in the, the communications and stuff, and, uh, and obviously um, good scientist uh, skills, you know, things that, that match. Uh, usually, in, in you know, when, when there is an opening in industry, it's, like, it's, a, it's an opening uh, that will fill out a, a gap, a need. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you have to work on the, you know, the same field and kind of like match the, uh, the, the job description. Mm -hmm. is, uh, like if 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 the job description if you, if you don't really match like the main things and the job description they are good at, at saying you know this is essential this is like yeah. prefer uh, just make sure that you really like you know yeah. uh, that it correspond to your uh, to your skills and uh, I'm, um, 
you know, passion, enthusiasm, that everybody likes it. <laughs> and, uh, and, it's, and, and it's hard, I have to say, because um, even if the interviews in general in industry are like very, very friendly, they are very, very friendly, um, but you meet with really a lot of people. And, uh, uh, so it's a day, day, you know, they, day. and they will ask you, and sometimes they will ask you like the same questions, <laughs> right? And uh, and you have to like you know, still uh, answer them with uh, you know with all your um, your enthusiasm. <laughs> Keep the energy high until the end. Mm, yeah, yeah. There is coffee at every corner in the, <laughs> in the company, so you just like you know, guns and get yeah. another coffee. And I just wanted to tea. remind for the people online, if you would like to ask more questions, please use my email, g.lally at ucl.ac.uk, if you have a question that you would like to post to Helen and Carol. Anybody else? What advice would you give to graduate students who are interested in pursuing uh, industry positions? But obvious, because obviously both of you were in pretty well-known labs, one really a pioneer in TREM2, macrophage studies, and you know, Helen, you are in, uh, in Alzheimer microglia focused lab. So would you advise, so my question in essence is, does it matter whose lab you do your postdoc in? How important is that? Because obviously that opens doors towards networking, right? So what would you advise someone who's in their PhD program who are interested in going to industry, but perhaps after their postdoc level, what kind of lab, labs that they should be looking for, what kind of environment they'd be looking for, and along that line, what can they can work on in their CV so that you know they can be considered strong candidates when they're ready to go up to apply for um, after postdoc positions in industry? That's a great question. Do you want to start? Or? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so, um, so in you know in industry, we are interested in making drugs. That target diseases. Um, so we say it's a really, um, it's a, it's a, it would be an advantage if you work in a lab that is uh, basically studying a particular disease uh, that you are interested in. And uh, you know, there are many companies, companies are interested in you know, different diseases. I think that this is relevant uh, work would be an advantage in general. So that, I mean, in um, in the industry, there are many different, um, you know, kind of positions and work that you can do. Uh, my experience is just from the biology side, kind of like similar to, uh, you know, in vitro and bio works and stuff. But, uh, there is data scientists. Uh, there's a number of other uh, things that are important. There is molecular biology, uh, a lot of molecular biology, of course. Um, so. Um, it's, um, I, I would not think that uh, it's that important that you are in a big, important lab in industry. Yeah. I yeah. see people in general that are from many, you know, different uh, labs. Um, uh, as might be important in, in a, uh, to become a PI in, a, in academia, mm. I'd say. Um, um, yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, if you, if you and, and, and of course, like the, the sooner you can be, um, you can network and, and, and know about what uh, what industry does and what you know, knowing things about industry, I, I, I think would be the better than working with, with people that are working in industry. But uh, still, if you're coming from a basic background, if you didn't have an industry experience, you still have a chance to get a, you know, a place in, yeah. Uh, in, yeah. Yeah. in industry. Yeah. I would say when you're looking for your postdoc, maybe try and find something that's not exactly what, you know, the same skill set that you're using for your PhD. Try and add something to your skills list, which I'm sure you probably is, already would do anyway. But um, totally for me, nice. anyway, it helped. Yeah. In my role, sometimes you know you get pulled into different things because you have that different background. But it's definitely better from my understanding as well when we're. At, yeah, know, I guess flexibility is also another key. Exactly. Yeah. You know, ability to adapt. You know, and uh, yeah, right. try to yeah transfer yeah. the skills in different contexts. Any other question? Yes, Alex. Oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eric Martin. I'm technician in Soyon on team and. Uh, Tim Bartels, lab. 
Um, in terms of contract and salary, what are the main differences in academia and industry lab? Like you are working in different projects, so you have a um, fixed term position or open-ended contracts? So for, um, sorry, can you, so you mean a, like a, as in a technician, like contract, or do you mean like, you know, what? A fixed, like a term, like do you have some sort of fixed positions oh, or open-ended yeah. or short term? Yeah, there's both. Um, there's some position in industry that are um, contract based. Um, they are not. How does it? It's open like a, ended. It's they're a, not open ended. Like and a five year contract, right. like a three year contract, something like yeah, that. Yeah, even like every six months contracts. Like that exactly. Kind of and then there are obviously positions that are more kind of open ended, but you're still at will. Obviously, you can leave when you want, and they can get rid of you if you want. But um, stability wise, I think. Well, I'm not sure, I haven't been in academia in a while, but in terms of stability, it, like I mentioned, it was something that I was struggled with at the beginning to kind of come to terms with, you know, could it happen, but then you kind of have to just let go. Um, I know that with, well, AZI, they're very committed to Alzheimer's disease, so they have a long-term commitment that they, you know, hope to fulfill, and um, so, you know, it's something that I, I'm happy with in this company. Obviously, every company is different. If you're in a, you know, in a large pharma, mid-size, or startup, it can be quite mm. variable how stable it might be. Mm. Yeah. If you work well, if you keep developing your skills, your knowledge, um, uh, you will always have a job. Yeah, um, it might not be in the same company. It might, you know, it might change because the company changed or because you want to do a different thing, uh, but as far as you do a good job and you keep developing your skills, you, uh, you, you always get a job. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, I think that uh, the idea that, uh, that people had uh, in the past that you were just like, you know, working the same company for all your life, it has, uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's changing for sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of turnover. Do a little bit about the path uh, from industry back to academia. Um, is it a feasible path? Is it something that you've ever considered? Um, do you know any colleagues that have done it? Or are there any skills that um, academia could benefit from, from bringing people back from industry? Do you know people? Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I know a couple of people. Um, is a... Uh, it, it doesn't look uh, that um, common, <laughs> let's say, um, but um, at least one, um, uh, one small uh, positive experience that I had um, in the, when I was in academia was somebody that, uh, that had been in the industry for a long time and then came back from academia. Um, not so sure, um, so it depends. Um, so, for example, um, the first uh, um, supervisor or mentor that I had when I joined Biogen, um, she always, you know, she told me from the beginning, uh, just try to keep, um, you know, for as long as you as you can, try to keep doing um, research, try to publish. Uh, that way you will, you know, you can still foster your career and you will have your, uh, you know, uh, open uh, future if, uh, if you want to, you know, if to do whatever in the future. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, obviously a good idea if you, if you think of one day that you, you know, you might uh, go back to, to academia. Let's say after a long uh, career in, in industry in which you, ne you never publish a paper and uh, you never gave uh, you know uh, lectures or presentations stuff uh, I, I, I would assume that it is kind of like different. Well actually uh, throughout uh, my career I've uh, come across several people who have uh, yeah. worked long time also in industry and now for example one of our UK DRI directors uh, Paul Matthews has been in GSK high level position for a long time mm -hmm. and now he's a director of a you know he has several 
high level positions in academia, uh, especially in terms of strategic uh, director level. He's also director of the UK DRI Centre at Imperial. Uh, I also know people who actually have also 50% shared positions mm -hmm. between academia and uh, an industry position. Uh, I also have know people in industry who have honorary positions in academia. So, like one one day a week, they work uh, they work in an academic context and have you know continue to have a lot of links between industry and academia. So I, that's definitely possible. Uh, obviously, these are all outstanding individuals who have done very well in their career. And uh, I have to say, also from a, you know a more academic point of view, bringing industry skills back into academia is also something that can be extremely beneficial. Mm -hmm. I have in mind also somebody else who has uh, worked a long time in pharma and then came back to academia and uh, organized a translational neuroscience institute. So bringing back this type of translational skills into the academic world and try to link the two together is something that could work really well. Extremely, I mean, it's been extremely successful in also attracting funding to, to bring you know, the discovery stage and the, you know, the academic stage together. So it's definitely possible. So maybe you will do one day, you'll never do. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other question? I wanted to just uh, ask a couple more questions about, uh, yeah, so that if you say that uh, you, know, you are interested in uh, making this transition from academia into the industry, you've been a little bit, uh, I don't want to say lucky, but like had some, some interesting coincidental. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so but what about, you know, uh, whether you, you don't have somebody coming to your department and say, I'm looking, I'm recruiting to, you know, people into my department from industry. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Where do you go? I mean, do you start networking at conferences? Do you have specific websites? What, what do you do for? What do you do for when you want to look for posts in industry? You have no contacts whatsoever. What advice would you give? Right. Um, we definitely post our positions on. Um, well, we have recruiters that yes. would post them on various different job websites. Mm -hmm. um, I think conferences as well. Just networking with. Pharma at conferences too is a good idea. Um, like leads of group, you know, you know, neuroinflammation groups or whatever groups you're interested in. Um, I think like a hybrid of both, mm -hmm. but you know, the those positions are advertised on um, job websites and our own company websites. Yeah, so just spend some yeah. time looking around and try to see whether you know your your position, exactly. your expertise could fit. Uh, as well. Yeah, so, right. So positions are uh, are uh, posted. Um, you can find them online. So each company has a you know, career um, page where you can find the positions. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, Indeed.com and another mm -hmm. uh, another websites they kind of like collect all these mm -hmm. positions that are around the internet and, and put it together. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did when I was looking for jobs, I I, I just went there. I I found positions that my um, you know fit me and. Um, and then what I did next was to try to uh, basically know or uh, you know somebody that might work in that company or that was associated with that company. I was in a big um, university, so of course I knew that there was at least someone that had been in that university that was in that company. I mean, it's, it's uh, on the year, so I I kind of like uh, network inside the company and. Um, and sometimes I was lucky enough to find uh, maybe you know somebody that had been in this lab that I knew the PI and that I contacted that way, mm -hmm. so I could know more about the about the position. Mm -hmm. um, so some informal networking can yeah. definitely help. Yeah, LinkedIn is LinkedIn your is best well. friend. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yes, and at the same time, friend. you know, networking and uh, through networking you can know if there are uh, if there will be opportunities in. In a particular uh, company, before even the, the mm. position is is posted, uh, it, that uh, that didn't work for me in particular. But I, I obviously did it because I knew that sometimes that can yeah. that can work out. Um, um, yeah. So and you know, can you each of you say something about you know a key lesson that you have learned from your experience in the industry? What would you say you have learned so far? Something. Mm. Key lesson, huh? Grab every opportunity you can to learn something new. I think just to constantly develop your CV, no matter. Because I guess you're exposed you're. to so many different things, disciplines, approaches. Exactly, yeah. And you don't know what your next position might be or where, so it'd be good to have as many 
mm -hmm. perspectives, scientific perspectives as you can get. Yeah, have a flexible mind for sure, right. and, uh, and uh, you know, be always open to, to learn. That, that helps everywhere and definitely in industry, of course. And uh, did you have a question? Uh, so obviously, you know, we're part of the Dementia Research Institute where our ultimate goal is also to develop drugs mm -hmm. and therapies against dementia. However, we cannot, academia cannot do it alone. So this is a little bit of going away from the, the career panel per se, but I was wondering whether coming from an industry perspective, can you just summarize very briefly what you think are the key strengths of you know, what industry can do versus what academia can do, you know, to develop a cure, because I think we need to work together. But what are the unique strengths that you think, you know, industry um, can bring versus what academia can bring? Right. Okay. So we have a number of collaborations with academic um, groups on multiple of our projects, and I think what's really nice is that, you know, we, um, so we work with academia, you know, it might be a, um, expert on one particular protein or receptor, what it is, they can bring that really thick, in-depth knowledge on this aspect that we can try and then build into a system where we can um, test compounds or, you know, tease into the biology further. I think it is really important to bridge both academia and um, industry. There's things that both can bring, like, um, you know, industry can be quite dynamic and move quite fast, so it'll help, you know, to bring a project forward to have that in-depth knowledge and kind of the, the hard work part um, behind it. But I don't know if you have any other perspectives. Yeah, so, in, I mean, there are a number of things that industry can, uh, I mean, definitely the industry had the, the experience and the, the, the infrastructure to, um, kind of like bring things together to make a drug. Um, we are very good at um, designing and set up essays that can be informative, that, that can be uh, quantitative, so they can really distinguish what is the best of the drug candies and stuff. Um, we have a number of, um, of um, you know, technical capabilities that uh, maybe in many labs, like, there, you know, there is a, uh, the most that you can do with your grant in your lab to develop. Um, so, you know, in all that had to do with, uh, with uh, you know, production and quality control of molecules and things, reagents that you can use, for example, in the lab, um, we obviously go uh, a long way to, you know, quality control everything that, that, that we do, that maybe in, a, in academia you don't have the time or the resources in your own lab or, or with the lab that you collaborate to, to do that. Um, I think that working, working together, you can, you can, you can do a, a, a lot of things, for sure. The reason I ask that question is because I feel like many people feel that, oh, going to industry is going to another side, right? but that's not <laughs> true. We're all part of a team, and it depends on what personality you have, how do you like, what kind of, you know, science, like how, how, not what kind of science, we were, because we we're all doing the same kind of science, the same tar with the same goal, but how, what, how, how you want to do your science does differ between industry and academia, and I think that is something that, you know, the trainees can put in, put, re really consider in, you know, when they're making this decision of whether to go to industry or whether they want to continue pursuing a career in academia. Mm -hmm. Cool. Can we just maybe conclude uh, with a final you know, message? Any tips that you would like to, to give to researchers at this stage who are now actively considering a move to industry? <laughs> Any career tips from uh, your experience? I would say network, <laughs> but I think network, I've said that a few yeah, times Network already. is very important, so don't be shy, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, don't be shy. Never get to know, get to know yeah. industry, get to know... Yeah. You uh, can go introduce yourselves at conferences, uh, say, look, right. Totally, totally, totally. And there uh, are opportunities to work yeah. in smaller, like, yeah. internships as well, so it might be yeah. a nice way to... Uh -huh. Yeah, you know what is a, a common scene that you can, you know, when you introduce to someone in the industry, that person was in academia before, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, you know, it was like... It's highly of, likely that's... It was, it was one of you, so it's like, you know, really, you know, really simple and, uh, and uh, you know, Usually are like you know very friendly and they would be you know super happy any of us 
to just talk with you and tell you, you know, tell about, about uh, our experience, super honest, and uh, that, can, that can be useful for you, because we went through the same thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for uh, thank you. your experience, for yeah, sharing uh, your views with us, and uh, I hope you found it helpful. Yes? Okay, good. And uh, we'll do more events yeah. like this. Uh, thank you very much for coming and for uh, watching. Thanks. Thank you so much.